Systems three. I'm having a hard time visualizing what the system looks like mechanically and how some of the equations you used are applied. How are you able to use latent heat gain equation? And I highlighted a few things here to remind myself to come back and address each of them. I think you mean sensible heat gain equation here, uh, but how did you use it to find Q in at the evaporator? In my mind, wouldn't delta T be equal to the temperature difference from state four in a refrigeration cycle to state one, since we are finding the heat gain of the evaporator? I think we need to be clear about what delta T we're talking about, but we'll go over that in a second. Uh, this would mean a delta T of zero, which obviously wouldn't work, right? That makes sense. Uh, also, the cooling tower is cooling the condenser and the temperature of the cooling tower water is 80. How are you able to use the latent heat gain equation again? I think you mean uh, sensible heat gain again, um, to find the delta T at the condenser. Aren't these two separate systems? Actually, these are three separate systems. So we're gonna draw a picture in a moment, which I think will help clear this up. 100 GPM flowing through the condenser and 80 GPM flowing over the condenser. No, 100 GPM flowing uh, over the evaporator and 80 GPM flowing over the condenser. So this will make sense when we draw the picture. Uh, wouldn't that equation be finding the temperature of the water after it has flowed over the condenser? Yeah, that's and that's what the question's asking. So let's draw. <laughs> it's all about the drawing. So let's start with the refrigeration cycle, which is kind of in the middle of the, the story here. All right, so in the usual fashion here, we had state one going into the compressor, state two coming out and then entering the condenser, state three leaving the condenser and then entering the expansion valve, and then state four after expansion before going through the evaporator. So that's the refrigeration cycle. No surprises there, but what's going on with the condenser water system and the chilled water system? So this problem was about a water-cooled chiller. So let's draw both of those and let's start uh, with the chilled water side. So for the chilled water side, against that evaporator, this, this is the uh, refrigerant flowing here. Let's actually write that so we keep track. This is a closed loop flowing refrigerant. Now we're gonna have a separate closed loop, which is flowing um, chilled water through the evaporator, of course there it's, it's closed, right? There's no mixing of the two. Uh, it's just an exchange of heat. And that is cooling the chilled water. And then presumably that hits a, a pump. We don't have to draw all these components. And then that hits any number of pieces of terminal equipments, air handlers, fan coil units, you name it. And each one of those has a coil in it, but I'll just represent all of their coils as this one coil. And then there's a fan blowing air over that. And that's how you deliver cool air to the space. So when we talk about Delta T in the evaporator, we could be talking about the Delta T of the refrigerant between states four and one, as you mentioned in your question, or we could be talking about the Delta T of the chilled water as it goes through the evaporator. The whole purpose of running a water cooled chiller is to make chilled water. So maybe it comes back at 60 or 70 degrees, and then you're going to cool it down to 40 or 50 so that you can go and supply it to some air conditioners. All right. And we call that Q in, but it's really a matter of perspective because it's Q out of the chilled water. All right. I don't mean to confuse you. Right. But obviously that heat is being transferred out of the chilled water, but it's being brought into the refrigerant, which effectively heats the refrigerant before it's then compressed. So now I think you can see where this is going as we draw the uh, condenser water side. So let's draw what's happening over there. We have another separate, that's why I said it's three systems and probably another pump, although that would be over here. 
And then am I going to try to be fancy and try to draw a cooling tower basin? <laughs> All right. And then I guess you'd have some kind of a header with a spray coming down. All right, so that's our condenser water return going back to the cooling, cooling tower, dropping down and then landing in the basin and then coming out of the basin and being pumped. So now that's an open loop in the sense that it's open to the atmosphere. Um, but in the condenser, you have a heat transfer where he is, you have Q out, which is leaving the refrigeration cycle and entering the condenser water effectively transferring the same amount of heat that left the chilled water and entered the refrigerant, now leaving the refrigerant and entering the condenser water. Plus, not only that, not only Q in, but also W in. The work of the compressor also has to be rejected from the refrigeration cycle in addition to Q in. So let's write down some of those things. This is a good refresher even outside the context of this specific problem, uh, we can say Q in. Well, I think I want to come back to your question, which was about the delta T's. So you were saying, how do you use the um, latent heat equation? And actually it's the sensible heat equation for water, which is 500 GPM delta T. And I use that equation twice in the solution. But the first time I used it, it was for Q in, which is this one right here. And the delta T was the chilled water delta T. So however much heat was removed from the chilled water, that's how much entered the evaporator. And then the second time I used it, it was the condenser water delta T, 500 GPM delta T of the condenser water. However much heat is rejected from the refrigeration loop enters the condenser water. And then the only other thing you have to know is that Q out equals Q in plus W in. So I think that should address everything. Let's just jump back to the question to make sure. So the latent heat gain equation is actually the sensible heat gain equation for water. The delta T is not the delta T of the refrigerant. So notice in this solution, we never talked about the delta T of the refrigerant. We actually don't go into very much detail at all about what's happening with the refrigeration cycle. We're really just taking Q in. All we know, we know about the compressor. So we tack that on to Q in and that gives us Q out. And then we're really analyzing the condenser water side of this. And you'll hear, depending on how much you work in buildings, you'll hear folks talk about the chilled water side, the condenser water side, if they operate uh, water-cooled chillers in that facility. And uh, the water-cooled chiller sits in the middle and runs a refrigeration loop, but we don't actually have to analyze it too much um, unless we're involved in the detailed daily operation of that to kind of understand from a high level how heat leaves the building. And then again, two separate systems, actually three separate systems. So I think that should cover that.